If Superman looked in a mirror with his x-ray vision, would he see his own skeleton or just see straight through the mirror? To answer this, I tried to sneak a mirror into my doctor's appointment, but they caught me. Hold up. I just gotta... What? What is that? Just... It's just no, you can't have so if we're going to test this out, we're going to have to make our own x-rays. I heard that some researchers had made x-rays using triboluminescence of scotch tape. When you unroll a roll of scotch tape, both sides of the tape that unstick become electrically charged. So electrons can jump off of the tape and fly to the other side. These electrons will sometimes knock into air molecules along the way. And whenever an electron changes momentum, it shoots off a photon. In this case, they have such high energy that they can actually shoot off x-rays. This type of x-ray creation is called Bremsstrahlung radiation. It literally translates to breaking radiation, because it's the radiation that's emitted when fast-moving electrons slow down. So to test for x-rays, I'm going to be using this radiocode detector, so I can actually measure the energy of the x-rays coming off of it. It's a spectrometer for radiation. So I have some scotch tape here, and I'm just going to pull it really fast and see if I measure anything. Grab it and pull it. Whoa. <laughs> what? <laughs> it actually is measuring something. <laughs> Look how high it went. But I have a hunch that something's up here. I shouldn't be able to create x-rays this easily. I know that Geiger counters can actually be sensitive to static electricity, so let's try electrically grounding the detector and see if it goes off. So I'm just going to put some steel wool over this that will kind of protect it from the static. Nope, nothing. We just hear background radiation. Well, that's actually a little reassuring that you don't get x-ray shooting off whenever you use some tape. The problem here is that the electrons have to gain speed between the two pieces of tape. When we have air around us, then the electrons immediately bump into the air and don't gain any speed. So in order to do this, it has to be done in a vacuum. But unfortunately, even when I tried it in my vacuum chamber, it still didn't produce x-rays. The problem is that even though I'm at low vacuum, you need a really low vacuum to make the x-rays. I'm at about 0.1 millimeters of mercury, but after reading into this more, we need about 0.001 millimeters mercury vacuum to make x-rays. So this isn't going to work with tape. This is an old half-wave rectifier. This is how they used to convert AC to DC. You can see inside the tube there's this metal cylinder, and at the center is a sharp metal rod. When you plug it into AC power, the rod at the center gets hot. And when the voltage is largely negative, then the electrons fly off of the rod to the positively charged cylinder around it. But when the voltage on the rod is positive, then the positive charges can't fly off the rod, so no current flows. So you only get half the AC wave, and you end up with pulsed DC current. But did I mention one thing? The inside of these bulbs is a very low vacuum. This makes it so the electrons can get from the rod to the cylinder easily. But this is exactly what I need. If I can charge up the rod to a high enough voltage, then I should be able to shoot electrons off so fast that it makes x-rays. But in order to do this, I can't just use a normal voltage from our outlet at the house. We need over 100,000 volts. But where can I get a voltage that high? Well, I'm going to be using my Windshurst machine. I have a separate video where I talk about how this works. I'll link it in the description. But when I crank this handle here, these two spheres get charged to very high voltages. What's nice about this machine is that the voltage is very high, but the current's still small. So it's not going to kill me if I get shocked. So I'm just going to hook it up here, and I'll put it behind these bricks to protect me from the x-rays. OK, so you can see the background radiation going here. It's at a 0 0.08 microsieverts per hour. So now let's crank this up and see if we produce any x-rays. Here we go. Whoa! Holy cow! That went up to over 120 microsieverts per hour. So we were definitely producing a lot of x-rays. Okay, let's make sure it's not getting through here. Okay, so I'm safe back here. <laughs> it's not getting to me back here, but as soon as I move it up here, <laughs> so you're getting blasted right now. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I have a new business I'm starting. Okay, hey, we got $5 x-rays, no insurance, no problem, $5 x-rays. 
Okay, I adjusted my Wimshurst machine and got the voltage even higher now. Watch how high of a dose we can get now. It went up to 8,000 microsieverts per hour. If we look at the spectrum of particles hitting the detector, we can see that they're mostly around four to 20 kilo electron volts. So these are actual x-rays. So we actually have a working hand crank x-ray machine. So now let's get back to our initial question. Do x-rays go through a mirror or reflect off of it? So I'm gonna put the detector right where we should expect the x-rays to reflect off the mirror. So if we can see the bulb here, then that means if the x-rays are reflecting, it will exactly follow the light's reflection and hit the detector. We'll see if the x-rays actually bounce off here and hit the detector up here. Okay, here we go. Not seeing any increase. Okay, now I'm gonna just put the detector behind the mirror. Here we go. Three, two, one. Whoa! It just shot right through it. So the x-rays are literally just flying right through the mirror like it's not even there. Now if you remember, x-rays are just part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So you might have expected that they kind of do the same thing that light does. But the reason they don't reflect is because they have so much more energy than photons of light. For example, a blue light photon has about 3 electron volts of energy. But our x-rays had over 4,000 electron volts of energy. So the blue light acts more like waves that reflect and refract. But the x-rays have so much energy that they're like little bullets. They just fly right through the mirror. Even if they strike any atoms of the mirror, then they don't reflect, but they just energize the atoms. So if you have a lot of atoms, eventually the x-rays will hit something along the way. That's why our bricks could stop them. But if you just have a thin piece of reflective metal and glass like this mirror, then it doesn't stop the x-rays that much. So that means that Superman wouldn't see a reflection, he'd just see right through the mirror. X-rays are actually really hard to reflect. They only reflect at very shallow angles off of shiny metal. Scientists actually have X-ray lenses that can deflect X-rays with multiple collisions at shallow angles off of metal. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you learned something. And remember, don't try anything you've seen me do here today. X-rays are very dangerous and I've made very sure that I'm not exposing myself to any dangerous levels of X-rays here. So don't try this at home. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, remember to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.